Welcome to this video. This is um, part two of the series about battling, <coughs> fighting the London system as black. The London system being this well-known setup. So <coughs> white plays bishop f4 and usually follows up with ec and c3, this very solid system that you encounter rather often. In part one I did explain um, this, these structures, but black has committed to d5, usually on move one even, so d4, d5. And this video, the second one, will be about bishop f4 against the g6 setup. So um, black usually going for a king's Indian or, or a Grunfeld with knight f6, g6 and white declines any invitations to a main line <clears throat> and plays bishop f4. Um, in general, there are various move orders that white can go for. He can play it in this way. He could also um, even go bishop f4 here, uh, here on uh, move 2. If you um, play um, g6, the king's Indian kind of setup, or Grunfeld, you can just do this. Here you have the additional option of also playing a move like d5 and transposing into the setups that I mentioned in the first video. But uh, in general what I'm going to suggest against um, in this position with g6 um, you can also play if bishop f4 is played on move um, 3 it, uh, move 2 it uh, doesn't really matter. So I always recommend the same setup. Black of course starts with completing his, um, his castling. This is um, one way to do it. White usually plays um, e3, castles, and here um, usually h3 or bishop e2, um, let's say h3. I don't really want to go into those move order issues. There are some ways to try to exploit certain move orders by white, um, but I never really bothered to look at this, to be honest. I just want one setup that I can play against this, and um, there, are, there are ways to... Um, trying to punish white, for example, um, for not playing h3, the, like uh, giving a, a retreat square. So early bishop h5, uh, knight h5, for example, might be an idea at some positions. But um, <clears throat> this is also one issue why white sometimes delays knight f3. But um, for, this, for the setup that I'm recommending, it's completely unimportant if white plays h3 first, e3 first, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, actually, I'm going to um, recommend here two um, setups. One um, which is more strategic and more positionally inclined and one aggressive setup. This that might uh, suit King's Indian players better. The positionally motivated setup that I played myself often is C5, which usually gets answered by C3 and um, then b6. So black is playing a um, kind of double fear in shadow against um, the London and this very often leads to a position like this. It's very very common. This kind of position which is um, more often um, encountered with colors reversed and then this would be a mainline ready system against um, with white, in which black has played this bishop f5, bishop e7 setup, known as the, the Lasker setup, which is nothing else than the London uh, with the colors reversed. And um, this is a good choice if you uh, um, are yeah, a strategical player who wants to keep, keep the pieces on and try to make small kinds of um, maneuvers and try to progress slowly. A good thing about this uh, setup is that all pieces um, stay on the board. There's nothing exchanged, so it's not really a, a dull position. It's uh, not a position that um, leads to a direct confrontation, but it um, can get sharp later and you have got all the pieces on the board. It's not like a simplified position where the opponent can just swap off pieces. In fact, this London system um, quite often leads to tense positions later. You just need to keep the pieces on the board as black and trying to find some way to imbalance uh, the position. It's not 
Um, not a particularly great setup if you ask me for why to play for a draw because you don't simplify the position or make it easier for you to play. Um, you only are able to play like 10 moves without thinking but then you need to come up with a plan and it's not so easy to find a constructive plan for white in this kind of positions. So this would be the positional um, way to play. There are tons of tons of um, games to show ideas. One idea for black is, for example, queen c7, bishop c6, queen b7, and then b5. These typical kind of ready maneuvers. Um, and uh, I, I suggest to uh, to look at games also with colors reversed. So this is a good setup if you want uh, want a longer game with uh, more of a strategical feel. But in this position you also have a very aggressive setup and this would be start starting with d6. And now whatever white plays, it doesn't really matter. Basically white can play c3, bishop e2 or c4. Let's say he plays bishop e2, it's, it's really the same all the time. Then this is the key move, knight f to d7. This is a setup that, that I like very much. It's, uh, it's very straightforward. Black prepares e5. And you can ask, uh, okay, why why move the knight again? Um, it has a specific idea. Black wants to play e5 very quickly, and he wants to make sure that e5 is really a strong point that cannot easily be attacked by white, or um, let's say um, that white's, white's pressure cannot really do much against this. Um, we can see what, what's happening. Let's say castles, e5, bishop h2, and knight to c6. This was the idea. The knight goes to c6, actively putting pressure on d4. So white has got quite some pressure on d4 now. And um, one point is that this e5 pawn is very securely protected. You don't need to move it in the near future. And this is a good thing as with the pawn on e5 being uh, very, very secure, the h2 bishop can get in the long run can get a bad piece because it simply always bites on this pawn and doesn't do much. Black Knight needs to be very careful with removing this pawn on e5, like advancing it or or taking on d4. In this position here, um, white has two principal choices. Um, the most active choice and probably the best one is c4. This, however, um, is a move that requires some knowledge by White, probably, or he simply uh, doesn't uh, recognize that he's sacrificing a pawn. Black now could, if he wants, play this and play Queen f6, sacrificing this pawn. I mean, Black will win the d4 pawn, but um, this, um, in in fact, isn't entirely clear. White can play Knight c3, Knight d4. I just put put it on the board quickly. And now move like this. And it's uh, not clear if black really uh, benefited from all this. The c7 pawn is hanging. And um, yeah, you cannot move it really because then d6 is hanging. Um, I mean, maybe you need to move it, but uh, it's not something that you'd like to do. Um, hard, to, hard to say what uh, black should play. In fact, I wouldn't recommend to grab the pawn at all. My recommendation would be simply to to keep the pawn on e5 and continue with f5. And this is in fact rather aggressive. f5, knight c3, and here you can um, yeah can choose. You can um, in this position advance e4, but be aware that this is somewhat risky because it improves this bishop. Any kinds of c5, c5 might make this bishop really strong. And let's just Let's just move this quickly. Um, if white now, uh, if black now is um, is not cautious, then this c5 move might be an issue, attacking the pawn and activating all the pieces. So you can play this, but it is um, it's tricky. In fact, I like it. Uh, I like the idea to simply keep the pawn on e5. Of course, as long as you have those two knights, you cannot uh, develop the bishop. But it's not so bad here anyway. So um, you can you can even think about a waiting move like king on the side, and um, then probably even think about g5, g5, g4, f4, various attacking ideas. 
this is um, this is playable for black and uh, leads to rather complicated uh, complicated play. It's uh, quite funny, um, by the way, that in this position, um, um, a top engine like Houdini likes d5 for white, knight e7, and um, gives white um, a pretty distinct advantage, which of course is absolute nonsense. Black is uh, black is better here. I mean, better than in any usual king's linear because this is um, simply a very stupid piece, and um, black is um, yeah, black is better. Yeah, it cannot cannot be worse possibly. <laughs> um, if black would be worse here, then the king's Indian must be a complete complete rubbish opening. So d5 is a, a fun mistake by the computer. Um, yeah, white needs to keep the pawn on d4, of course. Yeah, a possible continuation would be something like rook b1 and um, attacking b4, b5. And black, as mentioned, can go g5. You, you still can play e4. I mean, King h8 is a useful move anyway. So this will, will lead to a very double-edged play. White will advance on the king side, on the queen side, and black on the king side. And we have a pretty typical scenario for the, for the king's Indian, where it's a, a sharp um, kind of race situation with both sides attacking on their flanks, uh, where they're stronger, and you need to um, delicately com combine defensive measures and, um, and active measures to... Um, yeah, to, to get a good game. I think this uh, setup is, is pretty good against um, the London here. Um, and it can also be applied um, against similar setups, by the way. If we return, let's say uh, this kind of stuff. And white now plays bishop f4. This is in fact um, not, not, set, not a bad setup for white. Um, and uh, here you can also play this, like d6, knight d7, and uh, e5 to come. It can easily transpose even, let's say, something like this. And uh, yeah, we start to recognize this position. can easily transpose. This uh, is also a good weapon against this kind of bishop f4 setup. Um, and uh, what I mentioned briefly in passing, white can, can start with this move instead of knight f3. But in fact, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really change uh, change things. Let's say something like this, and now White, yeah, he can he can do all these moves uh, earlier, and um, in this way um, address the knight. Oops, the knight h5 idea. What I'm talking about is White sometimes plays in this way because, let's say, um, let's say something. Oops, <laughs> not e3, of course. Bishop f4, bishop g7, e3, and uh, let's say something like this here. This is um, a possible line that uh, is completely ruled out with uh, with keeping the knight on g1 for a while. And this is why white sometimes plays this. Oops very sloppy with my moves here, h3. And now, of course, knight h5, you can just uh, drop it back. Or if um, black would, would do it here, you can play something like this. And now g5 is ridiculous, as you can just, just take here. So these are some move order tricks here. But for the setup I mentioned, and actually both setup that I mentioned, it's completely un unimportant how white begins. You can always set up the pieces um, in this way. Um, yeah, that that's it pretty much. You don't really know need to uh, to know more. It's just a matter of those those two setups, um, which um, lead to a fine game for black. I think this b6 setup, the ready setup, is rather solid. The other one is a bit more risky, but um, you get um, you get interesting double-edged play. I think with this um, knight fd7 setup, just to show it once more. This idea, e5, knight c6, and and following up with f f5 later. Even I think this is uh, pretty good. Um, in fact, I, I sometimes play uh, the London system myself with white in, in in blitz and especially in bullet games where you need to dash out uh, moves quickly. And sometimes I even play it without really intending to do it, <laughs> just 
because you're an autopilot and entry moves. And this is a setup which I always um, had problems against because it's so it's rather aggressive and white doesn't have a clear plan. So um, a good way to play as black. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the final part will be about, um, just quickly, the final part, third part, will be about um, setups where black is committed to an early e6 and um, very often would continue in a Queen's Indian kind of fashion. And this will be the third part posted soon. Yeah, thanks for watching.